In 1944, George Stinney Jr. was just 14 when a rush to judgment sent him to his death in South Carolina's electric chair. Convicted in the murders of two little white girls, Stinney's trial reportedly took just three hours. The all-white jury deliberated just 10 minutes. Now, seven decades later, attorneys for the Stinney family asked for a new trial to clear his name. George Stinney could not have committed these murders. I think George Stinney saw those children, but I don't think George Stinney was the last person to see those children. The bodies of 11-year-old Betty June Binnaker and 7-year-old Mary Emma Thames were found in a ditch in the small town of Alkalu. A coroner's report at the time described a brutal beating. Multiple severe head injuries suggested the killer used a blunt instrument about the size of a hammer. Family of the victims still believe Stinney was guilty. They had no choice in how they died, and he did. And I think that justice was served according to the laws in 1944 when this happened. In the few records that still exist, Stinney allegedly confessed, even told police where to find the murder weapon. During the trial, his attorney called no witnesses, asked no questions, and filed no appeal after the young boy was sentenced to death. How did I know? Today, Stinney's siblings testify the teen was innocent, with them the entire time. And I'm going to clear the air. We are not allowed to go any place without my mother's permission. They were very strict with us. We could not go no place, nowhere. And listening to the family on the stand today, they draw a picture of a case in which critical evidence seemed to be completely overlooked in this rush to judgment. They pointed out in a crime like this, there would have been a great deal of blood, and yet they found no blood anywhere on their brother's clothing. Don? The obvious question, David, why did it take 70 years for this case to go back to court? This was a very slow moving thing, but it continued to build over the decades. At first, the family was afraid to speak out. They actually had to leave their home the siblings were talking on the stand today about how they had to leave in fear that a mob might show up to do them all harm after their brother was arrested. So they left in fear and didn't talk about it for a while. But they continued to keep the conversation going. And it took decades for them to find people to listen, to be curious, and to actually start doing research on this. They actually came up with some potential witnesses to bolster their case, including one man who was the cellmate of their brother, who said the young man at the time said that he did not do this and that he was forced into a confession.